Hello, my name's Fanula Donovan. I'm a highly specialist neurology outpatient physiotherapist working at Guy's and St Thomas's Hospital in London. I've been asked to speak to you all today to update you on a research project that I have been completing over the last uh, year and a half, looking at how uh, physiotherapy can best support people living with IIH. So what I'm going to talk through to you today is um, starting off with the introduction about the study myself and the current IIH service that we offer at Guy's and St Thomas's. I'll talk through to you um, about the study plan and aim. I'll discuss the current literature regarding physical activity in IIH. I'll go through um, some information about some one-to-one -one interviews that I conducted and on the back of that a uh, short answer questionnaire. And then based on the findings of these two uh, questionnaires and interviews, uh, what the future plans are. So as I mentioned initially, I'm Fanula Donovan um, and I'm a physiotherapist that specialises in neurological conditions. Um, and I have a, a special interest in idiopathic intracranial hypertension and have, have been part of the team at Guys and St Thomas's for about the last three years around this. Um, the physiotherapy service was introduced to the IIH service here about three or four years ago, initially by one of my colleagues and then taken over by myself. Um, it began with a presentation at uh, an education day around IIH and then progressed into one-to-one -one appointments. Since then, we noticed a larger number of referrals um, have been coming through, so therefore we continue to offer one-to-one uh, sessions, but we also introduced an education session. Um, this initially was a one-hour uh, session that included about a 15-minute presentation about physiotherapy and IIH followed by a question and answer session. Um, patients were then sent off uh, to complete kind of changes to their lifestyle based on the conversation and then uh, outcome measures were completed at one month, three months and six months after this. What we started to notice is that actually um, people living with IIH appreciated having a little bit more support over, over time. So we have just recently introduced the option of attending this this session once a month, um, but just coming into the question and answer session, um, which is a really good way of, of having a discussion uh, with other people that are living with the condition. So the project uh, initially started in December 2021. Um, I was fortunate enough to be awarded a grant joint with HOPE and IAH UK for a year. The aim of the study was to analyse the existing national and global guidance on physical activity for people uh, with chronic conditions, including headaches, um, and how we can apply that to people living with IAH. To then try to develop some practical written guidance on physical activity, which could be incorporated into um, the HOPE programme which is what we're doing now, um, and to provide some exercise guidance supported by um, relevant visual media or, or anything else that may be useful um, to further support people living with IIH. Uh, I liaise closely with the HOPE programme team, um, hoping to create some, some co-creation sessions uh, and then just to look if there's any areas that might open up further research to be done. So just to talk to you a little bit more about kind of the study plan and the aim and, and the progress that we So just to talk to you through a little bit more of what I did. So um, the research was completed between December 2021 and November 2022. Uh, it began with a literature review to see what the current research suggested about um, physical activity and people living with idiopathic intracranial hypertension. And then alongside this, I was also gathering um, feedback from patients that were attending the IAH physiotherapy service at Guy's and St Thomas's. Um, based on the back of these two things, I then conducted some one-to-one -one interviews. Um, the idea had been to look at a focus group, but on discussion, it seemed like there was such little information known currently that actually interviews would probably be more appropriate. Um, from this information, we were able to get a poster accepted at the British Lifestyle Medicine Conference, and that was presented there in September 2022. And then gathering all the themes and data from those interviews, um, I created a short answer questionnaire based on those themes, such as put onto the IH UK website um, and data gathered, which I'll come on to in a minute. I then wrote up a report regarding this, which we're now in the process of trying to, to publish um, and looked at some ideas of where we go from here. So as I mentioned, I started off with the literature review. So <clears throat> looking at the current literature regarding physical activity in IAH, uh, basically there was very, very minimal information around this, specifically for people living with IAH. So I used a variety of search terms um, and excluded any duplicates. I then reviewed the abstract of these um, 
and unfortunately 12 had to be excluded because they were more relating to medical management of idiopathic intracranial hypertension. Three were then identified as potentially being relevant, but on further reading around them, there was also no mention of actual physical activity, so they were also excluded. I then had to widen the field a little bit more and see, okay, well, what other um, similar symptoms, shall we say, to IAH, and what's the research suggesting around them, and could they give us some guidance about how best to, to support people living with IAH and physical activity? So to, to help me alongside that, um, IAH UK completed um, several surveys looking at perceived barriers to weight loss and exercise for people living with IAH and also limitation to exercise. And that helped me to highlight kind of the main main symptoms, if you will, that might prevent people from, from being more physically active. And they included with regards to weight loss, um, exacerbation of your symptoms, increase in pain, uh, fatigue and mood. And then the limitations to exercise was overall it increased the symptoms, um, particularly with increased head pain or pressure in the head, again, further fatigue and dizziness. So from that, I started to have a look around what other specialist groups and similar conditions said. So I looked at uh, NICE guidelines for the management of obesity, uh, looked into what the Chartered Society of Physiotherapists recommended around obesity, looked into the Migraine Trust and American Migraine Foundation, British Tennis Association and the World Health Organization. And this little um, picture on the side just shows the current recommendations in general for, for people in terms of how much physical activity they should be trying to do um, per week. So when I looked further into this, say what the experts said regarding physical activity and guidelines or advice, when we looked at pain as one of the things that was mentioned in the IH UK survey, um, the research suggests that actually those who are more active um, reduce their risk of developing chronic pain and that physical activity is recommended is recommendation uh, in treatment for reducing pain overall. With regards to fatigue, uh, physical activity is also adopted to help people to manage fatigue, but it needs to be supervised um, and a gradual increase in activity would be best. With regards to mood and well-being, it's long supported that physical activity is associated with improvement in mood, can also help to decrease stress, anxiety and depression. Um, and although they're doing more study so far, what they've noticed is some moderate form of in intensity exercise uh, around anaerobic is best. However, they did say that they haven't done enough research into more aerobic. So aerobic is things with more oxygen, so perhaps a bit more long distance running, uh, swimming, cycling and things like that. With regards to headaches and migraines, um, it's been shown that regular exercise can be effective in preventing migraines um, and it can help to reduce the, the frequency, so the, the amount of attacks of headaches that you're having. However, it is best to try and increase the activity when your symptoms are low or not present at all. So it's really just trying to find the best time that works for individuals around that. And then finally, dizziness. Um, it's been suggested that gradual increase in physical activity, such as walking, strength training, tai chi, um, rather than avoidance uh, of activity with the fear of increasing the dizziness is uh, appropriate. And actually, if you do avoid doing physical activity because of the dizziness, it's most likely to lead to further difficulties in the future. Um, as I mentioned, alongside this, I also had a look at some patient feedback um, who were attending the IAH physiotherapy sessions at Guys and Symptoms. Um, so 12 people um, provided feedback and of this 92% said they enjoyed the session and had a better understanding about the importance of physical activity in their condition. 100% found the session useful um, and 83% said they were very likely to change their exercise habits based on the advice. So really, really promising start um, around the information that was given to them. Uh, and then, as I mentioned, went to do one to one interviews. Um, so five people from the IIH clinic at Guys and St Thomas's were interviewed. This was a variety of people who had gone through the physiotherapy service and those that hadn't. So things that were identified as being most helpful were um, small groups because they were less intimidating and you could learn from each other's experiences and it was quite supportive. Um, it was useful to find out about weight and the importance of weight loss um, when that had been discussed. They found that very helpful. They found there was good support provided around diagnosis. Goal setting was discussed and they did find this helpful. Um, a mixture of goals from weight loss to symptom management were discussed and so not just focusing on weight loss. Um, direction to the IH UK website was also helpful. Uh, people found that counting steps was particularly helpful when increasing their activity levels. And they found that actually 50 to 60 minutes is probably a good length of time for any education sessions. Um, concerns that were identified uh, or less helpful information um, was that groups made it quite difficult for people to voice their activities if they were larger groups. Um, 
that diagnosis could actually be quite daunting and it was quite a lot for people to take in, um, which was very hard emotionally. Uh, there was lots of stress and fear around what it might mean for their longer term health and life. Um, they didn't think that there was much discussion around emotion and social aspects of living with idiopathic intracranial hypertension and that the main barriers and limitations to exercise were concerns around the body image, um, pain, as we've already mentioned, busy personal life, lack of support uh, or others to exercise with. Um, and a lot of people didn't actually understand the role of physio in IIH. And that's probably because it's not currently well known um, as so much and we're one of the, the only services that I believe that has a physio attached to it currently. So the main themes that are identified with regards to the input from physiotherapy specifically was a lack of mental health or social support regarding the impact of your diagnosis and symptoms. Um, and many would like the opportunity to discuss this more uh, or be offered counselling, whether that's around physiotherapy or, or not. Um, as I mentioned, a lot of people are uncertain of the role of physiotherapy in IIH. People felt that information leaflets and online resources regarding exercise would be helpful. In online forums uh, with the option to ask questions to a professional such as a physio would also be helpful. Motivational text messages could be helpful, um, but there was different thoughts about how often and whether that might actually be more of a burden, but just to try to help to encourage you to keep going with your changes in lifestyle. Um, but the biggest thing was pre-recorded exercise classes for people living with IAH with a variety of size models would be really helpful. So based on the back of that, uh, I created a short answer questionnaire, which, as I said, was shared uh, for about a month on the IAH UK website. So 88 people responded, but um, I must mention that not all questions had to be answered. So not all questions would have the same number. Um, there were certain questions around mental health and quality of life um, and then more physio therapy specific ones. So as mentioned in the in the previous slide, only 5% of people were aware of physiotherapy and supporting people with IIH. So there is definitely a lack of understanding around my role or any physio's role um, for people living with IIH. Um, what people identified if they, they were to have physiotherapy advice um, was that they would really like uh, support for about exercise that could be home-based, pre-recorded sessions, 30 minutes or less ideally, and wanting different body shapes being involved on that video. 89% um, of people would have liked the option as well of an online forum to discuss any questions with a physiotherapist, and also some, some resources for support, um, such as online exercise videos, as I mentioned, an information leaflet regarding physical activity and idiopathic intracranial hypertension, um, applications on your mobile for, for physical activity apps that could be useful. As I mentioned, a small number of people found that text messages to help keep you motivated might be helpful, but only 17 out of 71. Um, and people didn't really want just general exercise videos. They wanted specific ones for people living with IIH. Um, additional comments that were made uh, was that people would like some advice about what activities are safe to do when living with IIH. Access to shorter exercise sessions of maybe 10 to 15 minutes. Exercises that could be completed in sitting or when balance or dizziness symptoms are worse. Exercises that did not involve lowering the head or bending forwards because that could uh, cause increase in their symptoms. And face-to-face -face class options with people of similar abilities. So what next is the question. With all that information gathered, where do we go from here? So um, the next stage we're at at the minute is I've written up the report and we're now just looking to try and get that publicised so that we can get a bit more awareness made of the role of physio in, in IIH. Um, we're also just in discussions about getting a video uh, exercise class recorded. The idea will be that I will record a certain number of sessions. These will be for 30 minutes, but they'll probably be broken into either two to three rounds um, so that you've got the opportunity, if you've only got 10 minutes or you're not feeling particularly well, that you can just do short rounds of them. Um, or you can do more if you're feeling more energised. Uh, we'll hopefully have different levels and different model shapes. So we'll have uh, an intermediate, a beginner's and an advanced um, with different model shapes. So we'll have some exercise options in sitting, standing, with weights or equipment, without. Um, and as I mentioned, a different variety of models uh, or instructors shapes. I'm also going to do some sections around education um, to idiopathic intracranial hypertension throughout the session and also a bit of an introduction to start off with. Alongside this, we're hoping to create a, um, a leaflet or a booklet that's got a list of exercises that can go with the video. So we're only planning initially to create about three or four uh, classes as mentioned, but we know that with time that could potentially become a bit boring or a bit repetitive, or you might want to progress it a little bit further. So the idea of the leaflet will be that it will have different um, ways or different types of exercise 
depending on what we're focusing on, be that strength, be that more cardio, be that more flexibility. And it will show you how you can progress each one. So, for example, a press up, an easier version might be completing it in standing against the wall. You can progress that to on your knees on the floor uh, to a three quarter length press up and then to a full press up. So that's kind of the process that we're looking at at the moment. Also, there's a question around the opportunity for further research. So looking a bit more into the barriers to exercise, particularly around fatigue, headaches, pain, um, hoping to present a bit more information as well as what we're gathering as we go along at, at further conferences. So hopefully another one in, in a couple of months time. Um, and we also know that more investigation is required to see with the information that's provided and the way that we're changing services and support, um, is it actually making a change overall? So hopefully to carry out more uh, outcome measures or more investigations to see is there a change that's occurring with the information we're providing or do we need to look at how we change that a little bit more? So I'm continuing to try and gather feedback um, with hopefully larger numbers of people living with IH who attend the sessions that I run uh, monthly. So just to summarise, um, there are no studies or guidelines or very little guidelines specifically aimed at people living with IIH and physical activity. Um, people living with IIH have identified that education regarding physical activity and IIH provided by a physio would be helpful with knowledge around IIH. Um, and knowing the importance of how exercise can support this and then further potential modes of support such as video contents would be really useful. So that's just a little bit of an introduction to, to kind of what I've been doing so far and where we're hoping to continue to, to progress things a little bit more. Um, obviously this is pre-recorded but if you do have any questions then please do send them via, um, via HOPE or IAHUK and I'm sure they can get them back to me and I can try and answer uh, as many of those as I can. So thank you so much for your time today.